Hi. Hi. <laughs> Week 10. Week 10. Resources. Yes. Hmm. Last yeah. dip in the spiritual. Okay. And spirit as, as energy, as our vitality, our spark, our ability to, to, I think, to show up and energize. So even if you don't have any resources, like typically we think money first, right? A lot of times we think money or um, some in-kind services. But how, how are you a resource, as you said? Yeah. Hmm. I mean, like, well, let's just let's just think about re- what are resources for okay. me because there's natural resources. Yes. Yeah. Which we all share the ability to breathe. There's a big resource. Yes, right? water. Water. Um, some of us still don't have access to regular, easy, clean water. Yes. Um, and we got food insecurity, so food is, can is a resource. So on those, you know, on those levels. Just the natural resources available. Gas. Um, yeah, we just had a week and a half ago that little crisis with the gas. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we just we've put our systems in. We've put a lot of bandwidth between our natural resources and our access to them, direct access to them. Um, So this is more taking stock of personal resources, even though we're not inclined to use them, but knowing what they are um, helps to solidify material. Like if you go through just the people that you know and Mm -hmm. what skill set they have and what they are available to and for, if you want to dream something big, you can probably create um, everything you need for it just using the people that you know as a starting point and branch out from there. I mean, I think that's the way this world is really set up. But we are conditioned to not ask for things and we're conditioned to not want help and to do everything by ourselves, not recognizing that we're supposed to be connected and resources to each other. So, the, I mean, the beginning of the exercise is just to, to acknowledge resources around you and, and realize that you don't have to do every single thing yourself. Yeah, and, and to understand that that's a mistaken idea that our westernized imprinting does. The, you know, the, the hyper-individualism. You know, I did it myself. Look what I created. Look how I got here. Instead of understanding that, you know, someone had to bring the gasoline to the gas station so you could even go get the gas to get to work. I mean, all it's just, the, all that's of what I'm that. There's so much but bandwidth yeah, you know. in between and middle managers and people that get paid. And, and yes. I mean, think how many people get paid on the movement for you to get gasoline. Yeah, I mean, just, just that one resource. Yes, yeah. think about what all is involved in just that one resource. Um, and, and we make sure that everybody has gasoline. We do not make sure that everybody has clean water. And I... I Every, every session, this is one of my pet peeves, and, and um, mm-hmm. as far as resources go, clean water is one that I'm deeply uh, rooted to, and I'm not saying that I'm out doing anything other than going deep inside myself into the roots of, of humanity and hoping that people make choices, people with money, people with resources, people with the ability to, to make that kind of change. Um, happen I'm I'm rooting for mm. that I'm holding the space for that and I think a lot of people are especially mm. the people that need the water <laughs> yes of course I mean and, and I mean and how do we how do we make decisions as a collective that sustains the abundance of water you know that not only distributes it but sustains it and then um, I mean like how long do you shower or what do you do? that's under your control to conserve water or other resources. And even stepping outside of that a little bit, one of the things that I, it just occurs to me a lot, Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but the choices that we make for our own egos and for our own selves, you know, my pillows or my couch or, you know, the frame for the artwork my daughter made, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, I buy those things and people don't have water. Yes. 
you know, there's some part of me that has to realize like we make choices all the time to let's say alter our body for several thousands of dollars. We need to change ourselves that much more than somebody else getting clean water. It's just, that's why resources week is so important because we, we really don't see our resources clearly. We really don't recognize where there's help available to us and we don't recognize where we are available to help. Um, a lot of times we feel like if we don't have money, if we don't have tangible resources, yes, that there's nothing to give. Um, and I, I'm a person that's never really had money, but I do have uh, cleaning and organizational skills. <laughs> and I have been that resource to, to many of my friends and to many people. Um, it's something that comes so naturally and easily to me, it doesn't seem like something valuable. But when you go help somebody who has no idea where to start with things like that and organize their stuff. Or desire. Let's go there too. True. Because <laughs> some of us don't have a desire to be as organized. In well, they're ways. usually not calling in help either. No, they that's true. really that's don't true. care. That's but if it's, it's overwhelming and you don't know what to do and you want to do something, um, you know, I've been able to go in and do that. And by doing it, seeing the reaction, I see it as a resource where before I might have just thought everybody thought that way. Mm -hmm. um, so it's resources is, is almost an uncovering and I think that's why it's the last spiritual week. It's our gifts and we don't recognize our own gifts very easily. It's the stuff that comes naturally and easily to us that doesn't seem valuable. Because it is so natural and, mm -hmm. and so easy. Yes, I, yeah. And then we mistake that not understanding that it's our gift and then being frustrated and bothered by other people not behaving in the same way or having that same skill set. And then we've really done ourselves a disservice because now we're angry. And we don't value the resources that we do, that do come naturally. Yes. So it can be that proverbial uh, vicious circle. And since it is the, the last spiritual week and it comes between intention and aligning with intention, mm -hmm. you almost have to gather your resources around the intentions that you want um, in order to truly align with them. And if you take stock of your resources and your ability to be a resource, then you remind yourself to, to use resources and to be one. And you look for ways to do that. Um, and if you truly have nothing, just spending time in the intention space for people to have clean water or, or what, you know, for people to have a roof over their head or to be warm or to have food um, or to everybody to get to go to the ocean at some point. I don't know what, you know, whatever you think is really, really important for a person's soul um, to experience, put it out there for everybody. Give it, give it some life and give it some energy that will build. The more collective thought we put towards a thing, the more it becomes a belief. Because yeah, I mean, this is the, the spiritual before was listening. Yes. So it's also about being able to listen to others about what you don't know or what you're not valuing. And or if you're in a state where it seems too idealistic to think about or to meditate on you know, world peace or everyone having water or those larger picture issues, that's an ego construct to keep you from really allowing, I think, the soul to come in, to act as a, to give you maybe a different voice uh, around what you consider to be a resource. I mean, just think, the, the joke about men not asking for directions, where women tend to. So women are more likely to look at a resource, and I do this even when I go into stores, uh, I've trained myself to not just go in the store, just I'll find it myself, but to say, where is so-and-so? Like I was just, in, I was just in, I was just in Home Depot and I said, that, so where are the garden hoses? And the, 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 and the woman said, well, what else do you, what else are you looking for? 
And so she said, oh, you go do that, and you'll go here. And then another woman, the cashier, said, oh, no, I'm just the cashier. I don't really know what's going on in the garden. But you, if you ask him, he knows what plants you're talking about, which led me to start looking at shrubs. You know, I said, I don't think I want a plant anymore. And that was just from asking one person after another about what's in the store. So I would was, like to point out, since you've been doing our raw material, <laughs> resources have popped up in front of you like crazy. Oh, that baby, were never boom. there before. Yes. And some of it is, I think, is getting out of my own way, number one, and recognizing the, I don't want to say the limits of ego, but I don't have another phrase right now, but recognizing... It is the limits. The limits of it. That, and living Our within the limits. limits us. Living within the limits yeah. of the ego. And then I can say, okay, now what's next? And then I read this great, uh, this blog about if you get if you get goosies, which music is second, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the other spiritual. 2610. All right, so this is how this is connecting. So today I read this blog about, or yesterday, well, in the last 24 hours, that if you get goose pimples while you listen to music, then there's something in your brain that's activating a higher cognitive function. Because not everybody gets goose pimples while listening to music. Not everybody gets a kinesthetic response to music. And he talked about how you might have big picture thinking or, and I think when you're really in your resources or when you're really pondering resources, you are looking at the larger picture while at the same time looking at your immediate environment, your immediate uh, space. Um, You're acknowledging the strengths of all the people that you know. Yeah, because even as cashier, I accidentally bought, picked up a bag of grass seed that was open. And she said, is that bag open? And I said, yeah. She said, well, I think you get 50% off on it. You do. And, you do get it and she, off of open things. Yes. And so, and I didn't recognize that the bag was open. I just grabbed, well, because it was turned, it was open from the back. And I didn't recognize until I got up to the cashier. So it was just, that was $9 that uh, I helpful. spent. Yes. Very so it's, helpful. it's small things. And, and in living with earth sign people, Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn, they will let you know about the reason. Not that the rest of us don't do that. But, uh, but now I'm really excited about it. Just little things that's just happened in the last 24 hours. So resources week. The exercise. Oh. Yeah is really just about making that little list and knowing what resources are available to you, what you're lacking, and you know, put some intentions around getting it if you really, if you really mm. are lacking. Um, and then recognize what you can do even just with your thoughts to affect some sort of communal change. And uh, you know, this has kind of been an idea for a long time, but but it's a good place to talk about it. Forming groups of ORM practice, um, where a group of people comes together, meets once a week, and whether it's on Zoom, whether it's in person, and talks about the week's subject, about their experience with it, and um, sharing that with the group sort of helps build a whole lot of uh, energy around it that's soulful while breaking down some ego constructs and helping us see um, other perspectives just in real time real clearly watching other people experience this material at the same time that you do is there's just it's magic so if you can pull together family members friends people off the street i don't care uh -huh. whoever you want to pull together you know just a small group of people um and then pull in a collective intention. So if you've got money, make a donation to something in your community that needs it. If you have a skill set that you want to offer, um, you know, as a group, put the put the skill set out there and and do something. If you have nothing to offer but just your own thoughts, um, you know, spend some time in a in a group intention with some thoughts that do some good for your community. Even if the community you need to serve is the one that's sitting right next to you. Mm -hmm. So just a, a group effort towards those things, this makes me a little emotional, um, is just that reflection of soul. And it breaks down those ego constructs. And it breaks down those things that keep us feeling separate. Our resources pull us into our own abilities and into our own gifts and celebrating them. 
not with ego awareness, but mm-hmm. with with soul um, shine. Yeah, and the and the the the, the coming together can can help alleviate the illusion of separateness that you're in this by yourself or you're in this alone and then you can feel a sense of that interconnectedness and which increases or gets you aware of your gratitude of what you do have and what you can have as a collective and then that increases or access your joy the joie de vivre the joy of living um not to mention we grow we tend to grow faster uh, or grow more exponentially when we're in groups as well so because I, I I just think that it, what we're talking about and the people who are listening to this realize the last couple thousand years this kind of work would have been done or primarily under the domain of organized religion you know I mean just think kind of, yeah, yeah I mean just think it would have you would have not even thought to a lot more rules a lot of yeah of course a lot more rules a lot more rules you know, and religion just means to link up. I mean, it's Latin for linking up. So just, ORM is, is a way to link our egos and our souls uh, in a healthy evolutionary partnership. And not a hierarchy, but a partnership. And, uh, yeah, our raw material is in and of itself a resource. Yes. And it's a resource of that bridge between the part of ourselves that is an individual human being and the part of ourselves that knows that we're connected to everything else um, and how to how to navigate and balance that space in a way that that has it open and productive and I will tell you that when you get that stuff balanced um, that the information and power and soul stuff that is available from there is just mind-blowing and awesome what is an infinite amount of resources from the soul's perspective. Beyond anything we can you know? imagine. Because even this that I have on, it looks like an 11. Well, it was, it went to a glass maker and we made these, about six or eight of us. It was a couple of Christmases ago. And the glass maker thought I had this mistaken. I wanted it this way for the human rights campaign. And he changed it to this, not knowing. And it's a, I see this as an 11 which leads us into the next week. The 11th week is alignment with, aligning with intention, which is prioritizing one's time is another way to say it if you want to do, go that route. But the soul and our use of sustainable abundance through our resources is holy. And you'll feel it. I mean, it is a, it is a feeling uh, yeah. it, it, that... Uh, it's undeniable. Yep. Yep. It, it really is. So come join us. Yes, and create your own yeah. groups. And, uh, and remember, you are a group. When you start moving between ego and soul, you can feel, like, you can feel this extra something that uh, makes you feel more than just your singular individual self. We good? Hey, so. <laughs> right. thank you for being here. Check your resources, especially what you have to give. See you next week. Bye.